At the end of each meal period, you will need to run reports in order to do plate count and to make the deposits possible for the opener the next morning. To do this, open a new tab in Google Chrome and click the quad point bookmark underneath the search bar. Use your OUID and password to log in or use one of the coordinators if you don't have Sequoia access yet. Under reports on the left hand side, you should find two particular reports you will need. Three for the closer. The payment detail by time and the item sales summary by tender. For the payment detail by time, in the first box, shift all the categories to the right, then scroll down and place the two tablet inputs back on the left. You will not need any data for these. The next box gives you options for when you want the report to run. In the drop down menu, select date range. Both days should be that current day. From always starts 15 minutes before the meal period started, unless there were other sales outside the meal period, and two is always 15 minutes after the meal period ends. This ensures we catch all transactions. At this point, the report is done and you can click run. The item sale summary by tender has a few more selections to make, but it's not difficult. In the first box, you simply ship Nelson Court to the right. For the second box, you scroll down until you see DH guest, student, and other. Select all of these and move them to the right. The third box will generate from the second one, so you simply shift them all to the right. The fourth box wants to know how customers paid, so you will select Bobcat Cash, Cash, Credit, and Flex Points. These all need to generate in the right hand box. The final box will be filled out exactly the same way you did for the payment detail by time. You can now run the report. The payment detail is done by the closer every night uh, to run a detail for the entire day. This report is filled out exactly like the payment detail by time but instead of doing a date range, you simply select today and run the report. Once all of these have run, print one copy of each. Label the payment detail by time and the item sales summary by tender in pen with the meal period you ran them for. On the payment detail, you write all day at the top on the back of the sheet. On the payment detail by time, go to the very bottom of the report, which is usually the back, and highlight external totals, net sales, tax amount, and total amount. This makes it easy for managers and office assistants to find the numbers we look at most often. You do the same thing with the credit totals. At this point, we are done explaining the reports. They are needed for both plate count and for filling out the cash control sheet. The cash control sheet should be filled out before and after every meal period. The OA is responsible for counting the boxes and entering the cash into the correct columns. Before the meal period, the cash boxes should both be exactly $50. If they are off, get or deposit change in the Nelson Core Extra Change Bag and record on the clipboard how much you add or took. After the meal period, you will count the boxes again. Most of the time, they are over $50. However much they are over will show up in the box labeled Total. This number should match the total found on the payment detail by time under Total Amount. Make sure you look at the total and not just the net, which does not account for the tax. Once you find this number, enter it next to the box that says Sequoia Total. The two numbers should match. If they do not, recount the box, make sure you are using the correct number on the payment detail by time, and if they still don't match, take or deposit change in the extra change bag as we described earlier. You must make each over and under box equal zero. Be sure to initial the bottom box under each cash box you enter data for. This ensures accountability. The closer has a few more things to input before printing the cash control. From the payment detail, you will reference the numbers you highlighted earlier. You will need to enter the credit net sales, the cash tax amount, and the credit tax amount in the appropriate boxes. Make sure these numbers are coming from the payment detail, not the dinner report. Once you have entered those numbers, initial the box under SL initial. If everything looks good, you can print out the cash control. At this point, you can assemble the drop drawer packet for the meal period. Try fold the payment detail by time and the cash control and payment detail if you're the closer. And paper clip the cash and change in a small yellow envelope to the inside of the trifold. This packet will then go in a blue bag labeled Nelson Port Drawer Drop, which can be found in the top right hand drawer of the OA desk. This bag will be placed in the drop safe, which does not involve opening the safe at all. Plate count is the last task that requires the reports. From the payment detail by time, you will go to the bottom and find the row titled Meal Plans. Write the leftmost number in the row in the first box for the appropriate meal period and the day on the plate count clipboard, found above and behind the OA desk. The next box is Carryouts. 
You will get this number from the item sale summary by Tinder by adding up all the ways people pay for composables. Reusable carryouts. This number comes from the checker log. So you will add together their exchange number and then add any reusable boxes that were bought found on the item sale summary by Tinder. The cooks slash custodians column always remains empty. Check the checker logs to see how many student meal tickets were turned in and write the final number in the next box. For the full-time managers, you can look at the manager schedule that hangs next to the OA desk to see who were, who was here during the meal period. You will also need to make sure you include any managers who signed in, which will be recorded on the checker log. The student leader number can be calculated by looking at their schedule found on the board underneath the character board. The highlighted times are during the meal period. This number is usually above 10, especially once you account for any student leaders who signed into the dining hall from other venues, again, filed on the checker logs. For Bobcat Cash, simply look at the report and write the number of meals paid for in Bobcat Cash in that box. Guest meal tickets numbers will be found and tally on the checker logs. Cash again comes from the report and does so credit cards. There are almost never parent meal tickets, but the number will be found on the checker logs. Catering, ringside, and gift cards are always zero unless you are told otherwise. Flex points comes from the report also. Once you have all these numbers recorded, add up all the boxes under blue columns. This number will go in the box under others, and you will add it to the initial meal plan number to get your total for the meal period. Initial next to the final number and clip the checker logs underneath the play count and then replace the clipboard on its hook. The items sale summary by tender can now be placed in the top tray on the organizer on top of the OA mailboxes. If you have not already done so, get a manager to open the safe and place the cash boxes inside until the next meal period when they will need to be counted again. Make sure the drawer drop bag went into the drop safe and the safe has been closed completely. A very important part of being an office assistant is doing the daily deposit. The deposit is a report of the cash and credit revenue made in a specific day. It includes both cash and credit net sales, the tax amount for both, and the daily total. The deposit should be done at the beginning of each day but should include the numbers for the previous day. To begin the deposit, you should get the cash bag from the previous day found in the drop safe. A manager or coordinator can open the safe and you can find a separate set of keys to the drop safe hanging inside. Take out all the cash bags, put the drop key back, close the safe door, and remember to turn the knob to ensure the safe is locked. Next, go to the cash net link found in the deposit how-to. Log in using your own credentials. You should not share your credentials or use anyone else's login. If you do not have your own login, you should be sure to speak to a manager about obtaining access. Once you are logged in, click deposit at the top of the screen. It will take you to another page where you will need to click the binoculars. There will be a list of item codes in their description. Select Nelson Court Net Sales Cash. Select Nelson Court Net Sales Cash. First, import, input the coordinating numbers found at the bottom of the payment detail report into the amount box. Be sure to use the numbers in the net sales section. In the description box, write yesterday's date, cash net sales, and then click add item. You should never change the account number. You will repeat this process for the following codes. Nelson Court net sale credits, Nelson Court tax amount cash, Nelson Court tax amount credit. Double check the entries and make sure they match the support reports. And make sure all the codes are correct. Also make sure the correct date, which should be yesterday's date, is entered into the deposits description. If there is zero in cash, credit, or tax, then the cash net report. If there is zero in cash, credit, and tax, then a cash net report does not need to be created and the deposit does not need to be sent to Chubb. Um, if this occurs, you will still need to assemble the RA copy. You can call or, t or email Baker Catering that we do not need them to pick up the deposit that day. After you enter the four codes in, you will need to move to the bottom of the page and enter the number of bills and coins. For example, if there are three fives, that will equal 15. If the, in the credit card box, enter the credit card total from the support report. 
Look at the total payment amount. This should be equal to the cash drop and the credit card added together. And the difference should be zero. If it does not read zero, first recount the cash and make sure everything is entered correctly. Then go back to the cash control and see if there are any discrepancies. CashNet will not let you save the deposit until the different reads zero, so if there is an error that you cannot figure out, then you should seek help from the coordinator or a manager. Once the difference is zero and there are no errors, click save and print two copies. Next, assemble the RA deposit packet and the deposit packet for Chubb. To assemble the RA binder, copy in the following order from top to bottom. CashNet, deposit sheet, cash control sheet, payment detail report, payment detail by time, dinner, payment detail by time, lunch, and then if there is one, a payment detail by time, breakfast. Staple this packet together, hole punch it, and have a manager sign it. It must be checked by a manager before it gets put away, and should also be checked and signed before the deposit leaves the building so any errors can be corrected. It will then be filed properly into the RA binder. Record on the sheet in the RA binder for the date that you were doing the total cash, total credit, and total amount of both then initial it. In the Chubb packet, you will try fold a copy of the payment detail report and cash net report. Place any cash inside the trifold and any change into a small yellow envelope and paper clip the whole packet together. Place this packet into a blue zipped bag labeled Nelson Court Deposits found in the top right drawer of the OA desk and then put them in the safe. If there is no one to open the safe, you may put it in the drop safe. Someone from Chubb will come get the deposits Monday through Friday at 2 o'clock p.m. You will just hand them the blue bag, have them sign the deposit clipboard hanging above the safe, and indicate what time they picked it up. They might hand you another bag with a receipt in it. If so, this receipt will need to be recorded in the RA binder. The deposits are a very important document that is sent out of Nelson. With that being said, it is critical that the deposits are done correctly and without any errors to prevent any confusion or potential audit. As an OA, it is our responsibility to check and double check the deposits in order to ensure its accuracy.